take out or die in. My grandfather used to say, rest when you need to, but never quit. And this was one of those times I really needed the rest. I was coming home from a top secret mission in the San Demise Mountains, where a ruthless dictator was smuggling nuclear weapons with slave labor. Fortunately, I put a stop to that with two nickels, a clown wig, and some lightly buttered toast. Needless to say, I was exhausted. Hey, Mac! Mac! It's me! Oh, Jack. What do you want now? I was about to take a nap. There's no time for that, Kimosabi. I did it! I actually did it! Did what? I got us dinner reservations at Bistro M, that trendy new French restaurant in L.A. Jack, why would you get us restaurant reservations in another state, another country, that we left because it's cheaper to film in Vancouver? Oh, come on, Mac. It'll be fun. Have some brie with your buddy, some quiche with your kimosabi, some adventure with your escargot. I'd prefer some me time with my mullet. Ah, oh, you can sleep in the back of the plane. It should be whisper quiet, too, with the new ultra high-speed engine I put in it. The guy who sold it to me says we can be in L.A. in 20 minutes. 20 minutes? To get to L.A. from Vancouver? Exactly. <sighs> What's the dress code? I knew I could count on you, Mac. Plus, there's not even a money-seeking scheme involved this time. Just two friends flying to the City of Angels for an unforgettable meal. Just go easy on the throttle, would you? Have no fear, my speed-loving Lothario. This baby does Mach 2. We'll be in Malibu before you know it. Here, I'll turn on the radio for you. Maybe a little rock and roll will relax you? Jack, who sold you this engine anyway? Uh, I didn't catch his name, Mac, but he did have a terrible haircut and a puny mustache. Nothing like mine. Hey, have you seen how it looks when it blows in the wind? Check this out. Jack! Look at it! Look at this thing! Look at it! Yeah! Turn that closed door window up! Look at it blow, Mac! Look at it! Jack! Ah, yes. Here we are, the five Goodyear star rated Shaney M, LA's finest new French restaurant. Jack, I, I think you mean Michelin star rated. That's what I said, Mac. So then why is your eye twitching? Oh, uh, must be a speck of dust. This place is totally empty. What luck. Plenty of seats for us. See, Mac, I told you tonight would be special. Jack, empty restaurants are usually not a great sign. Aw, oh, come on, Mac. Maybe they're giving us the VIP treatment. Maybe. Let's just have a nice quiet evening, free of deadly traps that I need to diffuse with everyday items at my disposal. Did someone say deadly traps? Surely there's nothing like that here. Just a world-class selection of amused bouches and mouth-watering entrees. Gentlemen, may I start you off with something to drink? Ah, yes, garçon. Uh, we'll have uh, the two flaming skull and crossbones cocktails, s'il vous plaît. Of course, gentlemen, coming right up. I assure you, none of our beverages contain any deadly poison. Well, that's a little odd, but uh, comforting, I guess. You know, my grandpappy used to say, Bud, when someone from your past suddenly reappears disguised as a waiter... Sure, 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 Mac. Uh, tell me that another time. But hey, look at this menu. Boom Boom Shrimp. Explosive Lobster Tail. Death by C4 Sea Scallops. This is très chic. I guess. But something about this seems a little off. Here you are, gentlemen. The house... <laughs> Special. But first, allow me to create Le Flamble. Oh, I love this part. It's like those Japanese restaurants where they set the onions on fire and flip eggs into their hats. Almost as good as freshly roasted lizard. Whoa, hey, easy on the flames there. You know, my Aunt Gracie up in Minnesota used to say, a cold night like this, nothing fires up. Sure, sure, sure. Here, here, drink up quickly. Now, please die. What, what was that last part? Uh... Please enjoy. 
please enjoy. I will be standing over here glowering and rubbing my hands together. Well, Mac, you heard the man. Cheers to us. Wait, Jack, why are those flames green? I don't know. I just assume that's what French fire looked like. You know, when I was dating my fourth college girlfriend, she was really into chemistry and obscure poisons. She told me about a dangerous chemical element called thallium. She said its giveaway was its distinctive burn. Ah, uh, don't be silly, Mac. That would imply that someone sold me a high-powered plane engine, opened an entirely fake restaurant, somehow managed to flood my Facebook with targeted ads, and invited us here to poison us. He is right. That is very silly. Well, let me ask my voice assistant, Deary. Deary, what color does thallium burn? When set aflame, the thallium burns green and is potentially deadly to humans. Okay, Mac, you're the expert. Mater D, my friend here says the drinks are a little potent for his tastes. We will take water. With shaved cubes, please. What the? What is that device you spoke into? How did you know? I mean, oh, sorry for the mix-up with the drinks, gentlemen. We would never want any of our customers to get hurt and leave a negative review on help. Ooh, help. That must be French for Yelp. This place is so fancy. Uh, Jack, I'm really starting to think that something is off about this place. What are you talking about, Mac? Is it that it's totally empty? Yes. Is it the off-brand rating system? Yes. Is it the menu that is seemingly just a printout of a McDonald's menu that's been Google translated into French? Yes. Is it the waiter that's clearly Quail, your one-time nemesis who has been imprisoned ever since 1986 and was only recently released? Yes. <laughs> well, MacGyver, I see you have uncovered my clever ruse. Ah, Quail, we meet here again. Yes, we do, MacGyver. And all that time in the penitentiary didn't teach you a lesson, huh, Quail? Oh, I learned my lesson, MacGyver. I learned how to build a better death lock. Don't you mean death trap, Quail? No, my episode was titled Death Lock, MacGyver. Are you sure about that, Quail? Because back during my college hockey days... Oh, for, for goodness sakes, MacGyver, do stuff it with your inane ramblings about days gone by. No one cares. Anyway, it doesn't matter because very soon you will be dead and I will have my revenge. I have rigged your table to explode. Mac, he isn't lying. Under the table, look, th th there's a b b b b b a a bomb! Hey guys, are you lonely? Are you looking for a new friend? Or maybe someone just to talk MacGyver with. Why don't you give me a call? Hi, I'm Mike. Mike Garland. One third of the Making Fun of MacGyver podcast. And you can call me right now on our all new party chat line. 1-900-TALK-MFM. We can chat about your favorite MacGyver shirtless scenes. All those fly-by-night women he should have never wasted his time on. Or even how long do you think that mullet is? Ooh, I bet it's at least seven inches. So come on, give me a call now. 1-900-TALK-MFM. That's 1-900-TALK-MFM. I think you should cream me again. Cream me again. Hey, Mac, there, there's a bomb, bomb and it's counting down. How much time is left? Well, let, let me look. Uh... It seems to say... Oof, well, that's that's weird. It says there are two hours until it goes off? It was supposed to be for dessert, so could you please kindly sit there for the next two hours? Hang on, uh, Jack, let me borrow your readers. Let, let's do uh, let's do a quick search here. Uh, Deary, in what episode did I dismantle a bomb like this one? You dismantled a similar explosive device in Season 1, Episode 14, Countdown. Oh, yeah. Look, right here, I can see the, I can see it's uh, still streaming on Paramount+. Plus. Ooh, hey, that looks great. Can we watch one with me in it? I bet my mustache looks great in HD. Oh, it really does, but now is really not the time. Let's skip to the end. And... Oh, yeah. No, I, I remember this one now. This one's easy. And we're done. Diffuse. That was, uh, that was not hard at all. Oh, come on, what is this bloody contraption you're using? What in, what in God's name is that thing? Oh, it's nothing. It matters not, you buffoons, because I have locked the doors and, and I have cut the phone lines. 
You have no connection to the outside world. You will starve here, and no one can save you now. What? Now calling the Los Angeles police. What are you doing, MacGyver? Oh, he's just calling the LAPD. A SWAT team should be here in about two minutes. But I cut the phone lines! Yeah, uh, Quail, it's, it's called a smartphone. They've been out for almost 20 years. But I've been in prison that whole time, d- doing nothing but contemplating revenge. Exactly. Where is he? Where's the suspect? Where's he at? He's right over there, officers. Come on, come on with me. I will get you, MacGyver. I will get you. Well, Mac, I know we didn't get to eat dinner, but I do know this great little Vietnamese place in San Francisco, and we can probably be there in 10 minutes if we... Jack, let's just go home and have a TV dinner, okay? (sighs) Okay, TV dinner. Right now, I just want to relax and listen to some soothing tunes and get some rest. Sure thing, buddy. You've earned it. Not another word from me till we touch down in Vancouver. Deary, play The Lamp is Low. Now playing The Lamp is Low by Bill Henderson. Ooh, hey, Mac. I just got a text from this professor I know at the University of Vancouver's cryptozoology department. He says they spotted one half of a Sasquatch footprint down by Seymour Lake. And there's a $25,000 reward for whoever captures the hairy beast first. We gotta do this, Mac. We've got to. The trail is hot. This is gonna be the big one. I can feel it. It's right in my bones. We can even ask Gary and Kelowna to tag along. I heard Bigfoot can be sued by a sword. Midnight blow. The map is low. I said dream and watch the shadows come and go. 